Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Backyard Necro Show. Back, 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 backyard make a show, make a show. We, 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 Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, my interweblians, welcome back to the Backyard Mecca Show, backyardmeccashow.com. Mm-hmm. Thank you for coming back. This is our third show. Uh, we have a very great show today. Um, but before we get into that, man, um, I want to talk to my host, my co-host, Xavier X. What's peace, up, man? peace. What's good, y'all? Good, man. Welcome back, man. We missed you last show. Sorry, sorry for missing you. I in action. Yeah. Work, lift, healing. Work, <laughs> lift, healing. <laughs> yeah, do your thing, man. That's yeah, all right. I'm always we, working, y'all. We let them know. We let them know that uh, you were handling business. It was a good show, man. We had DJ Stutters. You know, we mm-hmm. talked about music. Uh, Dave was here. Dave is actually not here today. He couldn't make it, so. Peace you know, to the brother Dave. Yeah, he's handling business himself, but mm-hmm. we're going to rock out. Um Real quick, man, we're doing we're doing all right, man. We're getting you know people are so. people are watching, people are liking, people are commenting. So, mm-hmm. real quick, I just wanted to give a big shout out, man, to to Connecticut. You know, especially Stanford, man. Stanford is is killing it right now. That's they're, they're watching us. We got Bridgeport, West uh-huh. Haven, East Hartford, Norwalk, Waterbury, Bristol, Stratford, New Britain, Fairfield, hey, I'm gonna love Westport, this show. Ansonia. You know, <laughs> shout out to all y'all, man, for checking in, man, in the home state. Um, you know, we can see our stats and all that, and um. That's what's showing up. We also got, um, let me see here, out of state love too, man. Brooklyn's real heavy, man. Brooklyn's been Brooklyn. real heavy. Brooklyn, Bronx, New Jersey's real crazy. Lots of parts mm-hmm. of New Jersey. Nice. Boston, Mass, uh, Petersburg, VA. We got Rhode Island in the house. Uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, Washington, D.C., Illinois, uh, Jackson, Missouri, San Jose, California, Sheesh. Menlo Park, California, Tampa, Florida, Orlando, Florida. So, Thank y'all for listening, man, and, and checking in. You know, this is something new we're doing, so it means a lot. And please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Um, but, yeah, man, without uh, further ado, man, um, we have a very special show today. Yes, um, we have very special guests in the building. Um, so I want to introduce to you guys the Golden Hill Pogasa Indian Reservation. Um, we have, please introduce yourself. Clan mother, Sharan Wapatukwe Piper. And I'm Richard Sto- Sawing Bear Cows. Thank you guys. Welcome to the show. Um, mm-hmm. It's an honor to have you here. And um, basically, we just want to build with you guys a little bit. We want you guys to share your history with us, and um, we'd like to move on from there. So can, can you guys just give us a little history of, of um, the tribe, of you know, when you guys started and where you're from? Um, majority of our roots um, are in Bridgeport. Um, we have a few books mm-hmm. um, from Charles Brifledge. Okay. It's the Connecticut's history of our, you know, Golden Hill Pogwasa tribe. And it talks mostly about our roots in Bridgeport. Uh, majority of our villages were in the vicinity of Mount Grove Cemetery. Uh, okay. Kaquanic mm-hmm. Street means cleared mm-hmm. land. Mm-hmm. Um, we have Quarter Acre of Heartache Book by Claude Clayton Smith. It talks about, you know, the fight for our tribe, the fight for our reservation. When my father, you know, was chief, he passed away in 2008, Chief mm-hmm. Big Eagle. Mm-hmm. We have tons, you know, online. You can search our tribe's name, you know, five different ways. Uh, my name, anything. It, it would come up, even my father's name, Chief Big Eagle. Yeah. It would all come up with all the answers, you know, to a lot of criteria questions and beyond okay Um, my uncle William Sherman uh, he stepped foot for the Trumbull Reservation he received the deed he was the first Indian to be placed by the state of Connecticut in the 1800s Mm. on the books Wow Mm. beautiful beautiful we we have land from Orange Woodbridge all through like the fair to Fairfield County to Greenwich um, north of Massachusetts border so but Originally, you know, everybody always wants to know why, you know, it's always the talk of just one town, mm-hmm. but yeah. that's where the roots, you know. Wow. And that is. And it's long, long history. The Bridgeport Library has a lot of it. Mm. My grandmother, um, which is my father's mother, she was a chiefess. Mm. And when she passed away, she um, appointed my dad. 
and my dad appointed my brother sub chief, which is Chief Quiet Hawk, and they appointed my other brother War Chief Moonface Bear. Mm. She would take the bus all through, you know, Bridgeport and Sonia, where you know a good part of our other tribal members and family are at. Mm. Um, she would take the city bus every day and wear mm. her regalia every single day mm. all through, you know, city of Bridgeport all the way up to Insonia and back and. So, so Bridgeport is is like wow. the, the the main area. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful, man. Mm -hmm. So, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Nemeth. I'm going to interrupt this. No, no, beautiful. no. It's fine. Um. So, <laughs> what the first thing that comes to mind is there's a lot of people in Bridgeport that probably have no idea that they're connected to the, to, to to this tribe. Right. Have no idea. Not right. Connecticut. Period. You know. Mm -hmm. Um. Because I find that very interesting. How you know. Most of us, especially in the African American community, we don't have any idea where our roots mm -hmm. are. Right. You know, we're, right. we just were born. You know, a lot of us. You know, we know our immediate family. We know, mm -hmm. you know, maybe our grandmother, great grandmother. We heard of, and that's it as far as it goes. Right. You know. So go ahead. I mean, in Sonia, a lot of uh, of uh, my coach comes from Ansonia as well. Mm -hmm. So um, my great uncle. Uh, Fred Tinney, Chief One Leaf, was uh, very influential from that perspective, um, and uh, so yeah. When you walk through Ansonia, you will, you know, see and they will know that they are part of the Pagasa tribe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. So would you say that there is um, m most of the people that are a part of your tribe know that they are, or is it more people that are kind of like scattered? Um, we have members throughout the whole New England. Um, you hear about all the five tribes. You learn about things in school, the history. You don't hear about everything. Right. Um, there are people, we go to schools. We get invited all year, every year, to different schools, church groups, youth groups, yeah. Girl Scout, Boy Scout, you name it. They also come to the reservation on field trips. But a lot of these kids will tell you that they didn't know yeah. there was a reservations in Connecticut still, right, that there's right. Indians still living, because exactly. they're told totally something opposite and Completely different. Opposite. I've, I've not, not to cut you off, but by, I just want to touch upon what you just said. Um, there's a lot of people that think that Native Americans are extinct, like it's the past, and mm -hmm. that's crazy, that you know what crazy. I mean? Like, no. And that's why, you know, that's why something like this is very important, and obviously what you yeah. guys do is immense, you know, right. for. Um, our reservation, 1659, is the continuous oldest reservation, mm -hmm. and our tribe in Connecticut is still going. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow. But um, <laughs> we have members all through, like I said, Connecticut, New York, Massachusetts, Maine, you know, mm -hmm. and with everybody, you know, the females still giving birth, you know, up until a few days ago, wow. you know, it's like all year round, yeah. you know, our tribal members, spouses and the women, you know, still mm -hmm. having children. Beautiful. We're up in the 200s on our tribal role, so, That's and great. everybody is still active, you know, through mm -hmm. the month, year, you know, everybody's just together, whether it's holidays, you know, powwows, socials, mm -hmm. intertribal meetings, ceremonies. Or just on a daily basis, mm -hmm. you know. Hey, how you doing? Checking yeah. on the elders, you know. Absolutely. You know, we're still going, you know, strong, and we still get along with other tribes because there's mm -hmm. a lot of people who will ask you. Mm -hmm. They think that you fight each other and that nobody gets <laughs> along, and yeah. it's not it's like not that. It is, it's right? not like that. Yeah, it's like one yeah. big happy, you know, family, and wow. everybody just gets along. And and, and again, mm -hmm. um, your your position in the in your tribe is tribal leader. Tribal My leader. position is higher than the chief. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what does that entail? Like, just so the people know, you know, our audience, our interwebians out there. Um, kind of like the last say, you mm -hmm. know, the last you know signature. But everybody comes to you, you know, um, whatever the case may be, you know, might want to counsel, talk to you about an issue or problem. Um, learning something, you yeah. know, the teaching. Um, and it's the same thing with the youth, you know. We teach the youth at a very young age. Um, but it's mostly basically, you know, you're, you're the, kind of like the boss at yeah. the job. No, you know? absolutely. <clears throat> absolutely. So. It's a lot of responsibility. Well, it's an honor to have you, definitely. You know, definitely. Right, <laughs> you got right. good days, absolutely. you got bad days. Yeah. But I love all my people. I love my family. I love my tribe. And, you know, no matter what, we're still going to be strong. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm still going to be there for everybody. And, you know, I could be multitasking. You know, there's times where I've got like 50 emails that I got to, you know, yeah, get to. And, you know, a lot of paperwork. And, 
you know. Mm. It, it's a lot of fight for it, depending on, you know, what it is. But it's a lot of the teaching and showing and... Passing down information, make sure it stays alive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> in, yeah, in, yeah, of in course. the correct way as well. Yes. Yeah. Because, yeah. Uh, you know, as a travel member, you know, sometimes uh, when people know that you are have native blood in your background, they will ask you to do various things. Or mm -hmm. so, uh, you know, uh, quite often I'll shoot, you know, my clan mother a call or a text <laughs> and say, hey, you know, before we do this, because you always want to make sure that you keep the you keep the tribe in the proper light. Uh, mm -hmm. because uh, people will be quick to actually try to take it somewhere else, mm -hmm. yeah. you know. And so, uh, so yeah, um, I myself try to keep mm -hmm. her, you know, on speed dial just in case, because, mm -hmm. you know, we're always out there teaching as well. You want to make sure that you are teaching the correct way and doing the correct things that, that actually are, you know, um, are truly uh, to the culture. Mm -hmm. Powerful. Yeah. And th that's one of the things that that really inspires me about, um, you know, a lot of the Native American culture, man, like, even with all the struggles and, and and all the things that you guys have been through, man, you guys, and I say you guys as, you know, mm -hmm. as, as, as a whole, uh, you guys stay resilient and, and you guys, you know, you don't stop fighting, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And, and you're out there, you, 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 you know, you're, you're stomping in the streets, you do, you're doing what you got to do, you're doing the footwork and, mm -hmm. and, and. You know, that's to me. That's very honorable. That's something I respect very much. You know what I Absolutely. mean? Absolutely. Yeah. And um, I just, you know, it's amazing for for to know the history of certain things, and you're still willing to be out there mm -hmm. fighting for what's yours, really, right. what's right. You know? Yeah. My father fought blood, sweat, and tears. There's no way, you know, even me being chosen mm -hmm. by him and my grandmother Ethel, you know, mm -hmm. back in grammar school, and it's actually documented, you know with um, Indian Affairs here in Hartford, the state capital, at a young age. Mm. You know, I have to continue that on. I can't just, you yeah, know, just let it go it and let it up. die, and especially for our generation, the youth. Right, right. I mean, we're, we're entering into an age where it's age of information, mm -hmm. and if the proper information is out there, it can change everything, you know? Mm -hmm. It can really continue to grow things and make right. things proper. Um, I, I must say, I agree with Ricardo, man, like this is, the honor just to even be in your presence because you. um, I look at it like when you're looking at one person, you're looking at their bloodline. You know, you're looking at everybody it took to make them. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at your father, I'm looking at your uncle, I'm looking at everybody mm -hmm. as I'm looking at you, you know. Mm -hmm. Same with you, same with you, same with everyone. So I look at it like I'm looking at, um, I don't like to call our history history, I call it mm -hmm. our mystery, mm -hmm. <laughs> our my story. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> my story's a mystery. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know? Yeah, a lot of people, <clears throat> when they finally do get a chance to read our, you know, tribe's books, you know, there, there's just, like I said, there's a handful out there. And then you go on the websites and mm -hmm. you just read all the way back and all the way up until this day. You're amazed. It's yeah. like, wow, I didn't know this. I didn't right. know that. And, you know, just like a lot of friends that I have when I tell them, you know, what Poquanic Street means. And they're like, what? what? You know, mm -hmm. Claire Lynn. Yes, yeah. that's a native, <laughs> or, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, r real quick, with um, with all the social media and stuff, let the people know, like, well, um, if they're interested in, you know, doing some research, like, Have you know, the website, you. social media. Oh yeah, of course, of course. Um, we also get a lot of schools and colleges who do a lot of interviews and reports. Okay. Um, mm. it, some, one time recently, they were building a new web site, mm. and you know, it was with the tribe and information. So yeah, people, you know, they're. Feel free to like our Golden Hill Pogwasa page on Facebook. Um, our website has all like our contact information. The it web, does need to be. What's the website for the people? You just Golden Hill Pogwasa. Okay. Or you could just type in Pogwasa. You can type my name, and like I said, everything comes up. Um, okay. Even YouTube. There's some, you know, socials and videos and news reports. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, they feel free to call and you know if they want to ask questions or interview. Um, like I said, we get tons of families that come to visit the reservations. Mm. You know, we have a lot, you know, museum, uh, When do you guys bags. do that? Is there is there a certain time of the year? Or? No. Well, actually, when there's snow on the ground, you know, it's kind of difficult because <laughs> of the outside, you yeah. know, you can't really see and, you know, enjoy. But um, they would just call and set a time and date. And okay. Mm -hmm. So what, was some, what are some of the Pogwasa tribes' um, spiritual beliefs, spiritual traditions before um, come, um being colonized, you know, before 
they came and took over America, so to say. <laughs> <laughs> what were you guys into? And and, and are we going there yes. already? Yeah, you gotta ask that question. Yeah. <laughs> um, we have ceremonies, you know, for healing, blessings. Um, if an elder is sick, um, like I was saying, my oldest phone to the Marines. Mm -hmm. um, hair cutting ceremony, mm -hmm. powwows, um, the grandmothers, you know, with the moon ceremony, Inipi, which is a sweat lodge, you know, which is for cleansing and purification. Mm. Um, now, you know, people have the right if they want to still go to church, but they still, you know, practice. Um, we have sage for our cleansing. And what was the name of the sweat lodge? So the Inipi. Inipi. In, in sweat lodge. And, you know. So when I was sick from the vaccines I got from the military, there was this thing that they had called an infrared sauna. And what I would do is I would sit in it. The infrared heat would make me sweat out all of the toxins from the vaccines that were hidden in my in my fat mm. in my fat cells. Mm. Sounds very similar to the sweat lodge. <laughs> <laughs> you know? In the sweat lodge, you know, um, there's um, singing, drumming, mm. um, herbs. You know, like we use now, herbs from the earth, essential oils. Mm. Powerful, powerful, powerful. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of nature dancing too. influence. Uh, powwows when mm -hmm. we have our dancing and the drums, that's medicine. You know, you get out there and you dance oh, yeah. for the people yeah, and your ancestors who can't dance and who are no longer here. Right, right. And absolutely. you get a lot of healing from those drums. From that energy, that mm -hmm. vibration, absolutely. It's your heartbeat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah Mother Earth, yeah. It channels power, definitely. Strong, strength. Amazing. So um, I guess trying to structure the question, um, when religion came into play, how did your traditional beliefs in, re in religion kind of like come together? Everybody's their own person. Everybody understood everybody's, you know, religion and, you know, Bibles and beyond that, everybody mm -hmm. who has their own spirituality and what they might believe in and, right. you know, the earth and the water and, you know, some people may not believe in none of that. Right, right, You know, right. and there's, you know their own coding word for that but you know everybody still practices we still go and do our own you know traditional ways right, you know right right it's interesting because the old um, ways you know you can't let that go we still continue that tradition yeah. tradition right and that's like tradition before this modern tradition you know um, some of the research i did with ancient egypt or what they call kemet mm -hmm. um, they looked at nature as a way to understand the creative mm -hmm. that was like the first you know i guess belief system so to say one of the first is to look at the creation to understand the creator and they would look at all the attributes of the animals all the attributes of the plants mm -hmm. and then they would look at the creator as that you know and try to understand the personality or the the mm -hmm. ways of the creator through that mm -hmm. and a lot of the tr a lot of the religions the modern religions that we see now were created through pieces of that you know through different people obviously now we see people people use a lot of religion for but the 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 reason why there's a lot of truth in those is because it started off with trying to understand nature and then ended up getting translated and brought down and broken down into different what we call religions mm -hmm. you know um and that's why i asked that question because yeah. uh, oftentimes there's a connection between what uh, um people choose as like a religion that they mm -hmm. tend to ma be magnetized mm -hmm. toward in their own traditional belief systems yeah. and christianity uh, was highly close, at least ancient Christianity. This is Christianity called Coptic Christianity, which was Christianity in ancient Egypt or ancient Kemet, which is what I spoke of when how they looked at nature. Um, a lot of the belief systems were bridged, you know, even though we look at Christianity now as one, you know, how it's presented. It was a completely different way in this ancient time. And a lot of it had to do with them looking at nature and so on and so forth, with, along with new beliefs. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, okay. it's interesting. Um, I let my cousin explain about some like strawberry moon, like bear fees. Like we have other. Yeah, I mean, I mean if, if, you know, you think about it. If you actually are, are have uh, native blood and, and you've actually intermarried into with someone who may or may not have native blood, uh, you are pursuing uh, all your cultural things. And they're pursuing mm -hmm. Christianity. Mm -hmm. Where does that come? That structure come in right. together then to do to do that. Uh, at some point, there might be a, a tug between that, right, you know, right. depending on how, you know, I can remember being in a church where someone would, uh, uh, I think the pastor at this particular church uh, was 
was talking about uh, George Washington <laughs> and, uh, and, 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 and uh, a book that he read by George Washington and he was discussing the natives, <laughs> you know, and uh, just not in a good light. I won't even paraphrase the words that he used mm. because I don't like doing that. But certainly he, he placed uh, the Native Americans in a, in a bad light. Mm. And I remember at the time uh, a person asked me would I continue going to this church, mm. you know. My answer is to those things is that, um, of course, because uh, the person's naive and has probably never talked to a native. Right, doesn't know. <laughs> and so without that, then he only knows what they read and have never talked to a Native American person who's practicing. Right. And if he did, uh, potentially he'd have a different perspective, thought process, and perspective, perspective and, right. and then be able to talk about it in a different light. You know, and you, and you have that quite often. Mm. So, uh, so you know, yeah. So we, you know, I think people are still practicing, and and as you as you pursue, you know, however that person's road is is, is going, and mm. they pursue that red road, and you get out and you meet and talk with elders who can give you that help, give you that healthy perspective about that as well. Then you can make better determinations on on, on how you're carrying yourself. You're absolutely right, man. Um, just for the for the audience, and because we already shared that with each other, I'm also Native American, and um, I found out through my, you know rumor in my family. You know, it was like it was kind of known, but nobody proved it. Nobody said anything. No one showed any documents. And then there was someone that just decided to do the research. And we had one big family reunion in Eastern Maryland, and I actually met like you know half. Um, I guess I don't know if you want to call him half Native or half because he was you know we're all we're natives too. So I, you know it was it was weird that he did the classification, but he was a vice chief in a tribe in mm-hmm. California. So he was actually you know up with the traditions and stuff right. and he was teaching me about things and it was just kind of like just blew my mind <laughs> you know it was like whoa mm-hmm. and I felt such a, 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 a home with just even being around him and the way he looked at life and I realized that I looked at life the same way and I was I was uh, transitioning out of Christianity, so to say, or just transitioning out of religion more so just to understand what my own spirituality, what my own path was, um, what my, how I seen it, you know, versus how I was, how I should be taught to see it, or how I thought that, you know, how my perception was built as I grew up. You know, as you grow older, you have traditions, or as you get up, as you're growing up, you have traditions that are being shown to you or taught to you that you take up. You know, you don't really get to have a chance to see, for, see with your own eyes, see with your own perception until you get a little older and away from the people that have... Um, sort of nurtured that eyesight. So meeting him was phenomenal to me because I was able to see outside of that scope and to something that I was born with beyond what anyone could teach me, which, you know, which is who I am, you know. And so now being a healer, it feels like that is kind of like me going back into something that I didn't understand, um, wasn't taught. And um, I look at any time I meet a Native American, any time I meet another Native American, it makes me feel like there's so much more I need to know about myself, you know, because you guys have had the traditions and the, the information that I haven't got to have. Only only thing I've kind of tapped into is the DNA, right. you know, to remember there's something beyond anything this world could teach me that's here, mm-hmm. you know. And I think um, we, now we call it being woke or being aware, being awake, but, you know, a part of that is... Um, finding something within yourself that this world can't define you know what i mean and and you guys think you guys i feel you guys represent that energy that uh, we are still trying to tap into just from our memory <laughs> our cellular memory mm-hmm. alone you know yeah. trying to wake it up and um and you were talking about teaching actually richard i wanted to ask you you're uh, if i'm not um Wrong. You're a mathematical teacher in uh, the New Haven public school system. Yes, I am. Yeah, yeah. and um, my second career. <laughs> and bef- before that, uh, was it a professor? Uh? No, I, well, I worked in um, I worked in the insurance industry, so I worked uh, writing you know contracts for Fortune 500 companies, like workers comp okay. things like that, yeah. and liability companies, and um, and then um, you know certainly like I said, like as you get older, sometimes things happen in your life. It makes you change who you are. Mm. And uh, with that change, I decided to become a teacher. I'd always been teaching, you know, in some way, shape, or form ever since I was even in college. Okay. But um, but just never thought to do it full time. And yeah. now, you know, now I have a hundred kids every day yeah. <laughs> that uh that I get to pour into. You know, is it uh, inner city youth or? Yeah, and, um, uh, the school I teach at is New Haven Public School, 
and uh, it's in the New Haven Public School System. It's at Clinton Avenue. Shout out to Clinton Avenue Cougars, and um, and uh, basically uh, they're located in the Fairhaven area. And okay. So uh, I get to, you know, I get to pour into them in a way that you know through mathematics, of course, but uh, but I don't shy away from wearing um, my culture on me. Mm-hmm. At any given part of the day, whether it's claw, bear claws, whichever. So, okay. when the kids see it, they don't really necessarily know at first what they are, and then I get a chance to tell them what they what it, what it is. And uh, a lot of the kids, ironically, that I have, they're secondary language learners, so potentially they're um, Taino, right? Okay. <laughs> and, yeah. they, and they don't mm-hmm. even know, right? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, they'll go home and they'll say, you know, mom, dad. I had this teacher you wear his bear claws and, and whomp him to school. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and what's that too. about? You know what I mean? And so, um, and then, and then that that parent or grandparent uh, may not have had even had that conversation with that child yet. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And now all of a sudden mm-hmm. they had that conversation with that child, and the child comes back to me and says, "Yo, Mr. Cos, I'm Taino. You know what I mean? Like, like, Arawak, Arawak tribe, and you know." Da-da. And I'm like, "Well, yeah." And then we start having that conversation about Columbus, <laughs> right? You know right. what I mean? And yeah, you know yeah. that he never made it up to North North America. You know what I mean? And so we start talking about that, and then they take that to social studies. Mm-hmm. You know what I right. mean? Absolutely. And so yep. from there, they've been they've been, been open, open, right? You know what yeah. I mean? Like, oh. And so <laughs> now the social studies <laughs> teacher has to tell has to come clean about you know exactly. telling them some things and so and so that's how you know I get a chance to to actually just just teach not just mathematics but other things as well that's powerful you know? a yeah. symbol opened up a doorway <laughs> yeah. to wake someone like, that, that's it's all it took was that one little thing to open up the question that gives an answer that opens up another question mm-hmm. that gives another answer and Something to spark, yeah. you know. Now we have, a, we have a fifth grade group every year now that does a, a whole thing on Native American tribes wow. in general. Um, and then, but this year they, they didn't have my tribe up there. Mm-hmm. And so I had to go at them. <laughs> and <laughs> I said, hey, you're missing a tribe. You know, they had, they had, you know, some of the more well known tribes that you may see yeah. in general that you might see on TV, mm-hmm. Western civilization tribes, you know. Yeah. And, uh, and I was like, don't forget, you have this tribe here in Connecticut. And they're right, like, oh, right. oh. You know, so um, it's important that they that they actually see that, and then they will go up to to Foxwoods and Mohegan on a trip. Yeah, and uh, but they come back with a whole other perspective about things. Yeah, and so that that leads me into my my other question. Um, being that you're in the school system, um, as far as you know, the culture of the Native Americans, do you see it more now, mm. or is it still the same, or <laughs> what do you feel? Well. Uh, uh, What's happening is that uh, that people have to address the issue. Everybody's Cherokee. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is absolutely true. That is very yeah. true. Yeah, everybody says that, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. But but you know you can understand that. You can understand yeah. why they say that as well. You know what I mean? Because um, uh, I mean if you ask someone to name ten tribes just in general, yeah, you know, what which ones they're going to name? The biggest song, yeah, 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 absolutely. And so the ones that, or the ones that hear about the most. And so, uh, and then you know, without without you being as close to like, I mean, you know, I got my clan mother right here, so I, you know, there's no doubt what I know already. Mm -hmm. But if you've been disconnected a little bit, Mm -hmm. then you know, uh, there might be stories that have filled in those gaps for you that you don't that you don't know. So, but in regards to the school. uh, sooner or later, uh, there's going to have to be a movement where, um, in my humble opinion, that that they start to change the books. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Because uh, see, absolutely. Um, while there are movements to change, like uh, Columbus Day to Indigenous Peoples Day, that's mm-hmm. awesome. Mm-hmm. That, that cities and, and states are taking mm-hmm. that upon themselves to to um, acknowledge uh, uh, yeah. something that is incorrect. But uh, certainly, the books just still exist out there. <laughs> yeah, and even <laughs> that, are, that are incorrect. Mm-hmm. <laughs> e- even with the whole um, Thanksgiving thing, man. Like, you know, when when I first learned the truth about that, man, it infuriated me that we've been lied to all these years. Mm-hmm. And now I have my son. My son is twelve years old, and since he was young, I've I've told him the truth. You know, he when they do their little activities for that, you know, like. He's kind of excused, you know. Yeah, so are my children. Yeah, yeah. so mm-hmm. yeah. you know, I took it upon myself in two thousand uh, in two thousand nine. I'm like, there's there's got to be something where they talk about that, you know, the, what really happened. And I came to find out. I found online the uh, National Day of Mourning up in Coles Hill, 
in Massachusetts, mm -hmm. and um, it's been what nine years now. It's been a family tradition. We go up there every you know Thanksgiving day, and um, you know it's a beautiful thing. You got you know native from all over come and talk, and people support each other, and mm -hmm. they talk about what really happened. Um, I mean, what 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 is your take on that? Like as far as people still celebrating and and you know just being hidden from from history and basically lied lied about um i can't hate on everyone you yeah. know everybody's got their own point of view and mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. understandable i can respect that because i would want somebody to understand my point of view and respect you know me mm -hmm. um i don't care too much to celebrate it unless i am surrounded by Native American Indians mm -hmm. and our supporters and friends of our tribe and friends of other tribes. Um, you know, Native foods, uh, drumming, yeah. singing, you know. I like that Massachusetts up there in Plymouth, they do that every year. That's mm -hmm. beautiful. Yeah. And that they still show and tell the story and they still have mm -hmm. their marching going on because, you know, on Thanksgiving Day, while everybody's traveling through Connecticut and New England, nobody knows about the whole Pequot War right. in Connecticut mm. and all the way up, mm -hmm. you mm. know, the killing women and elders and babies, you know, mm. men are fighting. You know, a lot of people don't know the true story and, it, and it's very sad. Mm. On Thanksgiving Day, I particular won't eat turkey because mm -hmm. I just feel like that my people were killed over yeah. placing that turkey on the table, you know. So there's a lot, a little bit of different, you know, mixed emotions there. Mm -hmm. It all depends, you know. Interesting. Oof. That's deep. Because, you know, like the sight of, of, of just the whole, the whole holiday can be a trigger. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like if you're not careful, you know, mm -hmm. it can be a, the whole, the whole period of just going outside during that time can be a trigger if you're not careful, I see. Right, right. right. I mean, yeah. and I get invites, you know, from friends and family, you know, that are non-native and I'll go, you know, and they'll make sure there's chicken or you know <laughs> ham you know, they, you know yeah, so yeah. they'll put a little native dish or you know a little southern dish for me and right, so, right. you know and i'm thankful that's for that. good that's good respect yeah, yeah. 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 Definitely. a lot of times it becomes a you know a day of a of more of a fellowship day than mm -hmm. you celebrating a particular thing you right know what i mean because you know you already know the history of that what happened yeah. was not good right mm -hmm. but uh but i'm thankful to have you know my cousins around me that day. Mm -hmm. That's where the Thanksgiving comes. Yeah, yeah I've noticed me. that it's been converted in a mm -hmm. sense for a you lot know. of people in that. Yeah. yeah, it's a day of mourning. There are a lot of yeah. Yeah. tribes that will tell you Absolutely. it's just flat out a day of mourning Most for definitely. them. Definitely. Mm. But you, you, by you saying you take the good out of it as well. You know. I mean, you have to. I yeah. mean, uh, um, you know, um, anything that has happened in history that has, that has been negative. Um, if you actually uh, know that, then uh, hopefully you'll be able to do something positive about it. Just a feeling that I'm expressing. Yeah, 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 yeah. A feeling I'm expressing. Otherwise, uh, you continually harness that negative, that negativity. Right, right. And um, and uh, you know sometimes there's there's not a, you know. There has to be you know. Remember, we're talking we're talking about 2018, mm -hmm. right? Yes something that happened years ago. So I'm talking about someone's, uh, someone's uh, else's history that, that made me disenfranchised. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. They, can't under, they can't understand that at times right. um, because they may or may not have bought into that. Who knows? Right, or benefit from it. So the, the dialogue has to take place. Mm -hmm. uh, so I know where they stand. Once I know where they stand, then it's all good. <laughs> you know, right. I know whether, how I want to interact with that person going forward, you know what I mean? But but uh, but you can't not acknowledge that it didn't happen, right? You know what I mean. And so that's the that's the thing about that. So if they could acknowledge that, then we can we can start the dialogue and go forward from there where we need to go. But if you can't even acknowledge it, then mm -hmm. I ain't got no parts because because mm -hmm. then you can't even mm -hmm. understand where my peoples are coming from. <laughs> right, right, right. Why why you you might think it's been it's taken so long though to you know to be acknowledged or brought you know. The history of being changed like indigenous people's day from columbus day like why why has it been so long i don't know my my whole personal opinion is mm -hmm. i just feel like not like they want to hide or forget about what they've done you know in the mm -hmm. past you know 
give you a piece of paper and here mm -hmm. sign this and you know we'll give you all this you mm -hmm. know food and blankets if you just give us this piece of land and I mean yeah, be and, careful with the blankets though right, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. native children were sold back then for ten dollars wow I didn't know that didn't yeah know that. yeah wow. so Sick, I mean like you know, they made a lot of promises you know, mm -hmm. a lot of, you know, natives could not read, they could not spell, they could not write. So, you know, they're thinking they're getting a good deal, you know, and then they sign it over and then... Broken treaties. Mm -hmm. And then it's just very ugly for a lot of the tribes all over the world. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of it is trying to just keep it hidden and mm -hmm. just keep, you know... Like a hidden genocide. Yeah, to keep their version going. You know, for example, it's not example, it's true, not to get off this topic, but the Indian residential schools where they were taken from home, put into Christian schools, mm. you know, weren't allowed to practice, mm. speak their language, mm. haircut, haircut, lots yeah. of abuse, mm. you know, and now when that's brought up, they try to hide that, mm. uh, get rid of the school or the paperwork, and they're looking for somebody to apologize. Um, you hear a lot of that, even till today, mm. where they're looking for, you know, something. Yeah. Mm. And they still try and cover it up and, interview people who are you know older now you know who remember or who worked the system that time and so mm -hmm. i just think it's something that they just yeah. want to cover up or forget and mm. oh yeah they're not trying to let it go you know? no the treatment from back then it doesn't change it doesn't yeah. matter that it's 2018. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know we still have things being taken away from tribes yeah. you know we're still fighting for what is rightfully ours right. you know and one of the biggest things that happened recently that you know that made national headline news was standing rock mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. i mean that was that was all over what do you what do you what is your take on that like and if you don't mind for the people who may not be familiar with this because you know we don't want to assume everybody just knows mm -hmm. can you kind of explain what that was about a little bit you know briefly just so people have a general understanding of what this was about in a nutshell? Yeah, in a nutshell. Yeah, in a nutshell. Yeah, nutshell. Yeah, it don't have to be nothing they extensive. To, they wanted to put a pipeline right through in the middle of uh, of native country. Right. <laughs> you know, and disrupt everything that was indigenous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, we could talk about that disruption in a whole yes. various amount of ways of how that would disrupt a lot of things. Right, right. Um, as caretakers of the earth, uh, you know, I, I just applaud and commend them in what... Uh, they did out there in the garage just standing their ground yes mm -hmm. um yeah because that's that's desecrating sacred land yeah. you know mm -hmm. burial grounds yeah that's some we call it the black snake so it's, it's you know evil mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. they're actually trying to do that now and like um up by new jersey the mm -hmm. lenape tribe so mm -hmm. now they're facing that and say that try say the name of the tribe again lenape lenape in new jersey wow that's all. You're you're out that yeah, way. Yeah. So you know I'm gonna check that out. Yeah. Then I'll be. Um, is there anything that you guys wanna um bring up or share or um yeah. anything like that? What's your outlook on the casino in, in Bridgeport? Um, the politicians, um, the agreements that they have with all the tribes, whether you're state recognized or state and federal recognized. Um, Washington, the, you know, the BIA up there, Bureau of Indian Affairs, and like I said, and even in Connecticut with the governor, there's a contract that can't be broken mm -hmm. um, that they have put into place with the tribes. I know you hear a lot of talk. You hear everything looking like it's a green light on, you know, yeah. every social media, every news, and so on and so forth. No matter who has tried, even with other tribes, you know, saying that they're gonna put a casino there, they're looking into it. It's Greenland, mm. which means it's, you know, tribal owned by Golden Hill Pugwasset. Mm. It's not owned by any other tribe. And frankly, I wouldn't step on anybody else's toes. Right. I wouldn't walk up into your land and just, be like, yeah, I'm just gonna plop my GHP casino here. Right. I think that's just a little, you know, too far, a little rude, a little disrespectful. disrespectful. Especially <laughs> when we're friends and we're out here at a powwow, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> laughing it up, dancing and talking and, you know, the kids running around and we under the same booth. Wow. You, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Right, right, I just right. think it's a slap in the face. It and, is. You know, as for one tribe, they talk like it's their land mm -hmm. when it's not. They were mm -hmm. only given one land, which is not even nowhere, oh. you know, near here. Wow. Just one piece of reservation. 
but um no matter you oh, know what the talk is you know behind closed doors you mm -hmm. know in undisclosed locations and meetings um, everybody could say that they're gonna put a casino but at the end of the day you have to look at the contracts you paper. have to look at the deed mm -hmm. right you have to look at who really owns it um, mm -hmm. what was said in that paperwork that can't be you know undone or ripped up or thrown away right so wow. and that's why you know governor Mal Mal Malloy was saying you know I, I couldn't imagine breaking ties with you know you, you just can't right, you right. can't break that right. you know and then you also have to look at it where the other two tribes who do support mm -hmm. you think they're going to continue giving you money mm -hmm. if you mm -hmm. you know yeah. let some other company come in right so, yeah. and these are a lot of things that like you said the stuff that's on social media people don't understand this side right, you know what right. i mean like I had no idea you, you you just hear people talking about oh it's going to bring lots of jobs to mm -hmm. this and that and you got the other people oh it's going to gentrify but they don't really know right what's i mean what. we looked at pros cons a's b's and c's years mm -hmm. ago mm -hmm. with our blueprint and when we put it all out there and we were you know advertising and you know doing the same thing the billboards the applications you know shirts posters you know the whole nine and actually, our people, not tribal people, but our business people, our architects and builders and constructions, MGM kind of followed our from one to 100. Mm. They, wow. they, they just copied and mm. contacted the same person, wow. did the same exact like <laughs> billboards first, town first for not, you know, they wow. kind of did the whole wow. every step. Like if I was walking, they walked right behind me, like every second. But, um, whew. I don't know. I just yeah. yeah I it's feel just you. A, yeah. That's deep, it's man. too much. That's like, you never lot, know. Man. Like if you want to be upset, angry, yeah. you're just like yeah. what? Hey, what emotion do this, you pick? <laughs> you know. But I do all know all of them at the same all time. You yeah. had half of the people, like you were saying, they were for it. Then you had another half that wasn't for it. Yeah. You know. So mm -hmm. we heard both sides. But a lot of the people know? don't know still the history. So right, right. They really don't know what they're choosing. But you know what I mean? till this day. There are still people who are yes and a no. Yeah. Um, in any casino that you hear about right now, that MGM wants to put up in Bridgeport for GHP, now they want to go after the other two casino tribes and put mm -hmm. one up where they wanted to put one up. Mm -hmm. And then you have Massachusetts. Now they're going. You know. So I mean, gotcha. like you're trying to fight mm -hmm. all these tribes and their land, and but in reality, they we're all being told no. Mm. All of us. Everybody's mm. being told no, you know, and yeah. that's coming from the higher, higher ups. Wow. You know, the politicians in Connecticut, a lot of people think what they say goes. Yeah. Well, they can give their opinion. They can speak. They can write type letters, but they're not the one with the last say so. Mm -hmm. You know, it's Washington, D.C. It's the gaming commissioner, mm -hmm. you know, Bureau of Indian Affairs, and right now it's set on frozen, and everybody is being told no, wow. whether it's commercial or Greenland. <clears throat> we're all being told no. No. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um. So I, I've I've always been curious, like what what is the whole thing with like the Native Americans and like certain casinos? Like how how does like <clears throat> how come it, it for the you know for me and also for some of the people out you know in our audience. Um, Cause it's it's always, uh, if I'm not mistaken, always Native Americans that um, own the casinos. Am I correct? I might be wrong. Or yeah, um, give or take. It's kind of like here's your option. Yeah, we take mm -hmm. all your land claims and we'll give you a casino. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. um, that's all you're probably going to be able to do mm -hmm. is a casino. You know what I mean? Being federally recognized, it only gives you a right. Mm -hmm. You know, gotcha. um, we can have. 500 states sending letters every hour on the hour and calling every hour on the hour, but that's not gonna give us what we want or what we need. Right. I know a lot of tribes where they either A, don't have a reservation because they said yes to a casino. Mm -hmm. um, we give mm -hmm. you federal recognition, you could just do the casino, you know what I'm saying? So like, it's like one or the um, other. Yeah, and wow. I'm not doing that. For our land claims in our tribe, um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm positive that we won't maybe get every land claim, um, but a majority I would like, and one of them would be Bridgeport. Yeah. Um, Casino-wise, 
you know, I would have to listen to my people, mm -hmm. see what they want in their tribe. Because mm -hmm. there's plenty of plenty, plenty of other businesses that we could do to have money coming in, right, you know, right. for our people. It doesn't right. always have to be a casino. Be. But that's kind of basically what's always thrown on the table is yeah. your option. Um, right now, being state recognized, the mm -hmm. only gaming that our tribe is allowed to have is bingo. Wow. So wow. that's all we could have. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Ooh, man, this story yeah. is like... And if we did deep. slots, it would have to be online, but we would still have to go through a whole criteria. And even then, the gaming commissioner could say no. And it bothers me so much because these are these are people telling you what you can do with what's yours, almost mm -hmm. you know, in, in a way. And that that's that's, that's sick, frustrating. Man. <laughs> yeah, it's sick. It it's yeah. mind boggling. Like I'm listening to can, this, and it's I like I can only imagine what you guys feel. You know, and that's me oh, being yeah. an outsider. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. Well, of course, you know, we everybody has their own feelings when they hear what politicians are saying. But we have to wait for that Washington, D.C. call. Mm -hmm. Our lawyers are out there. Our lawyers mm -hmm. are here in Connecticut. You know, um, my brother, Chief Quiet Hawk, is constant traveling back and forth, you know. Um, and then we have to listen to what the Bureau of Indian Affairs say. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, our last, like, our last life. the one room. Mm -hmm. Man, this is heavy, man. And the thing is, like, all right, so. Like for African Americans, I mean, like I said, I think the two communities are probably like one and the same. We just don't know, don't realize it. But you know, a lot of us have no connection to any kind of people. You know what I mean? So right. you know, like things are. And this is unfortunate. You know, uh, very scattered, and and we don't have um, organization to have uh, leadership that we can just communicate with and get things mm -hmm. done and, or any of that, you know. Mm -hmm. um, to be honest, it's very inspiring to hear mm -hmm. how organized y'all are. Mm -hmm. That's facts. Like, mm -hmm. you know, just that's, um, that's amazing. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, of course it's a struggle, but you guys are doing something that I don't see <laughs> amongst us enough. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. When I do see it, it's not something that I can access. It's not somebody I could just talk to. You know, it's some fraternity or some boys club. You know what I mean? Not people that I can actually connect with and feel a kinship with. That's very rare. I mean, it almost doesn't happen. It doesn't kind of happen, honestly. I can't remember the last time I felt like this or even heard indigenous people say the things that you guys are saying. You understand what I mean? The kinds of battles that you even have. You know, a lot of us African Americans don't even have these kind of battles our battles are different we have a different set of problems you know what i mean right right um you have to want to put in the time though as well i mean uh you know um uh, when you know i remember when uh when i think i first decided to make sure that i was you know coming back to where i should be mm -hmm. you know that's how i put it some people say walking the red road, but um, I remember a cousin of mine said, you know, uh, you gotta come back naked. <laughs> 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 and you know, um, you have to wanna do that, man. You you can't like, um, especially when you're, when you're really going back and you're meeting with elders and talking about traditional cultures, you can't bring back with you anything from now. Mm -hmm. um, because it, it's, I'm not saying it's irrelevant, but um, you know, it's like it's like me going into a drum circle and saying, "Yo, that drum beat's hot. Let me spit something over it right now." <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man! You can't, you can't, you can't do that, man. You can't do that. I mean, this is a, this is a. You're listening to a drum that has been played this way for ages, and you have to want to come back like you know nothing at all. And sit there and be a neophyte and learn from scratch, wow. not say a word, <laughs> and just watch and and mm -hmm. and learn. Amazing. Um, and and um and that takes time, man. And some people don't want to um, give that time. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, then um, you're still going to be that same naive person. You're absolutely right. Going forward, mm -hmm. you can't you can't say someone could teach it to you. You know, all of a sudden, 
<laughs> it doesn't work like that, mm -hmm. you know, um, because uh, I didn't grow up on a res. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I didn't grow up on a res. So when I come upon someone who's grown up on a res, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know what I mean? It's a whole different mm -hmm. thought process of what is being held on to, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And you can't feel that until you can actually sit with them and understand that. Yeah. How would you describe that difference between someone who, um, you know, try, try to go into that a little more because that's you know someone who has been on who's been raised on a reservation and someone who hasn't been raised on a, like what are some of the differences? What are some of the things that you noticed? Um, well, you know, I'm not saying that this is a hundred percent, you know, Just from your what it is, but but you know, uh, of course, it might be traditions that on a res that you're able to keep that you um, don't necessarily keep when you when you're just growing up in a city. I mean, you walk out the door. You, you know, you, you hitting, you hitting the street. You go up in the res. I mean, you know. Um, I'm sorry, somebody's fault. Uh, <laughs> no, sorry. Right. Keep going. Keep going. Yeah, I mean, uh, there might be things that you. I mean, I'll just take for example in the morning. You know, you might start your prayers out with some sage. I mean, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if you know if, if you're running for the bus in the morning, you know, and, you know, you may not take the time to stop and, 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 and blow that sage and say your prayers. Sunrise you know? is still good. Yeah, Sunrise, it's on, yeah. right. Still you know what I mean? And so we still do it. So, mm -hmm. so, and I'm just, you know, saying, this, so there's things that occur that may occur on a, on a res that, that, that someone has been, that's been grained in them for years that continue doing yeah. and that you being pulled off or not even have grown up in a city wise have not right. um, been accustomed to doing. I'm not saying you can't do it. It's just you haven't been accustomed to do it, right, right. and um, and so you want that. You you want to go back to that that piece, man. And that's what that person is holding on to, mm. you know. And thankfully, so that they're holding yeah. on to that culture for yeah. you until you get there. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> until you get there. You know? Yeah, beautiful, man. Beautiful. So we have about ten minutes left on the show, um, and I just wanted to ask, like, wh where do you guys see? yourselves the reservation going in the future or what, what do you what do you what would you like to happen or your goals or um you know just the future for you guys i see it <clears throat> stronger than what it is now i mean don't get me wrong we're strong mm -hmm. but even more stronger absolutely you know, mm -hmm. bigger better just more stronger yeah excellent last words i see words? a very good outlook just honored y'all that's all yeah, yeah. yeah. Def, i feel the like heavy kinship Def, between yeah. us i love it and it's just great you know mm -hmm. it's it's very inspirational for me so Absolutely. you know i'm just gonna go research some more things hopefully Good. we stay in contact and yeah. then you guys talk to you guys some more you know this is mm -hmm. beautiful i had a moment where i was like yo she looks like my grandmother oh snap <laughs> yo <laughs> real i had a moment i was like yo <laughs> Oh snap! Oh, I had funny. a picture. That's funny. <laughs> Whoa! Yeah, I did. I had a mo I had a real moment. Um, I had a few moments. This was very special to me. I yeah. must say. Yeah. I'm yes. getting. I'm getting to the point where I'm. You know, uh, I was just telling them on the way up. But I'm 50 now, so you know, from a getting into an elder perspective, mm -hmm. that uh, you know, um, I'm constantly learning still. So, um, so one of the things that you know I want to see going forward is that. Uh, that I pick up the language more even, mm. you know, mm. the Algonquin language. Say the name of the language again, please. The Algonquin language. Algonquin language. Algonquin. Algonquin? Yeah. Okay. And, uh, and um, being able to start really teaching it to mm. a lot of the, the, the tribal members so that, you know, because that's powerful in itself oh, as yeah. well. You know, just, that's just one of the oh, things yeah. that I would like, you know, to see is that that we do that even more um, because when you, I mean, you guys have been there, even if you, if you don't know a language of another person, they're talking around you, mm -hmm. you just like, you feel left out. Oh, you, know yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. So, but we need, you know, that has to happen. That trade language, even amongst the tribes has to happen that we, we get it together from that perspective. And so that's, that's just powerful. That is, that's powerful. if I might add to that, um, just for everybody that's listening, uh, language is, is immensely powerful. I mean, just even, uh, I don't even know where to start. You know, one of the things I can say about language, just to, you know, so everybody that's listening and just take this with you. Um, the Hebrew language, Hebrew language, they even say that's the ancient Hebrew, it's connected to the stars. Mm -hmm. Like if you, if you took pictures of someone speaking this language, you could actually see like glyphs. Mm -hmm. You could actually see like 
the energy forms of this person speaking. Think about that. Now let's think about English. English is a bastardized language, a mixed language. It's a language that's created off of a lot of evil, if you want to really keep it real. You know, and we give it power because we have power, but it necessarily in its root doesn't have the kind of power that these ancient languages mm -hmm. have. So just even though some of you may think, well, I don't know anyone else that may have this language, so then why should I study it? It has power. You're mm -hmm. speaking to more than just people when you speak. Speak to power. <laughs> when you speak words, you're not just speaking to people, you know. There's, there's, there's much more than people listening when you, when you, do, when you speak. Mm -hmm. So there's power in what languages you use. Yeah, it's very true. it is, very true. And, and that's our and that's our trade language, you know, going from Canada to Florida mm -hmm. for, mm -hmm. the, for the eastern woodlands, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know. And there's some there's some there's some different dialect inflections, yeah. you know, as you go from Mashpee to Pequot mm -hmm. down the way. But but there had to, but there's still a trade language that all of us understood back in the right, day. Right. So uh, so you know, I'm looking forward to kind of immersing myself there, and you know, and I have another elder that I work with all the time to try to to try to do that. Beautiful. Yeah. Amazing, man. Amazing, man. Well, and just to add another thing, um, on our Facebook page, we post um, events for our tribe and other tribes that the public can go to. So, okay. you know, people are more than welcome to Absolutely. come out I'm, I'm and definitely, enjoy and I definitely check want to come out, out and see. And can you share the social media again, please? Just yeah, I know you already on did, Facebook, but, Golden mm -hmm. Hill Pogwasset. Okay. Um, they just like the page and. Cool, cool, cool. Mm -hmm. Please, everybody, go check them out. I know I am. You'll see me like it soon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want to bring, <laughs> bring my son. Definitely, I'm gonna talk to uh, Jay yeah, and my kids. Visit man. The yeah, my kids gotta yeah. come through. Man, my wife gotta go see this. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, um, again, thank you guys so much for for coming. It was an yeah, honor. Thank you. Thank, thank you for having thank us. You. Thank you for opening up to us and our our audience. Um, yes. You know, you guys didn't have to do that. So every, you know, we. we very much uh, appreciate it and respect um, uh, just just you guys being here and taking the time. Um, so I just uh, want to end the show um, to letting our listeners know, please go uh, check out the Facebook page for them and, and the website and um, just stay informed. Um, and once again, thank you for, for listening. Um, Next week, we'll be back with Hartford MC, Marvelous. He's an amazing MC. Please uh, check him out. Um, and one last thing, uh, our website, BackyardMeccaShow.com, uh, Backyard Mecca, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, you can now catch us on Google Play, as well as iTunes, YouTube. And please just listen in, tune in. We want to give you guys a lot of insightful shows like this. Uh, so please just share, comment. It means a, a great deal to us. Um, but once again, we'll see y'all next week. Peace and love. Peace. Peace, peace. Aquane. Thank you.